All right, we will now begin tackling the topic of linear decomposition. And stay with it for a very long time, possibly as much as one third of the entire course. And of course, all of the subsequent topics will rely on decomposition. So decomposition is the linear algebra equivalent of dribbling in basketball. It may not be the ultimate goal, but that's what you end up doing most of the time. Now, why is that so? Why is decomposition so ubiquitous in linear algebra? Well, broadly speaking, there are two reasons for that. First of all, and this will be the lesser of the two reasons, a lot of applied questions naturally arise in the form of decomposition problems. Now, you have already seen several examples of that, and in just a little bit, we will learn that any linear system is nothing but a decomposition problem. But more importantly, linear algebra strives to help us understand complicated things by breaking them down into combinations of simple things. So whenever you encounter a complicated object, you must first decompose it into a sum of simple objects. And that step right there is linear decomposition. Now, I have previously described linear decomposition as opposite of evaluating linear combinations. Now, in order for that statement to actually be true, it needs to be a little bit less ambitious and a little bit more precise. So in order to help me clarify the precise way in which decomposition is opposite of linear combinations, I would like for you to watch the following riveting clip. Unless it's a really interesting one. Yes, take a look at the color and then you're going to nose it. Tell me about the fruit aromas first. It's very dense. Jammy red fruit. Fantastic. Okay. Make yeah. a notation on your on your grid. Got it. Next, tell me about do you have any uh, minerality? Is it earthy? Is it mushroomy? Uh, is there brush? It's got or, a little earthiness to it. Is it the dominant aroma in the wine? Or is it a secondary, a tertiary aroma? It actually kind of fights for the control. The earthiness of yeah. this wine? Okay. And tell me about the oak. Do you smell any baking spices? Any vanilla? Any Got a vanilla. Okay, fantastic. Go ahead and put that down on your notes. I think this is going to be key in trying to identify this wine. Okay. All right. Let me now explain the point that I was trying to make with that video. Here it is. When performing decomposition, and that's exactly what the people in the video were doing with respect to wine, they were decomposing the complex taste of wine into the individual simple flavors and scents. So when performing decomposition, you must actually know exactly what to look for. I'm sure you noticed that the guy had absolutely no idea what to say until either the expert prompted him or he looked at his sheet. And then he was able to say whether there was more or less earthiness and exactly how much of jammy red fruit he was able to smell. So in my mind, that describes decomposition pretty well. Decomposition is not so much an act of determining what's in there without any a priori knowledge. Rather, it's determining how much of each ingredient that you know beforehand is in there. And that's a lot less ambitious than doing a complete deconstruction from scratch without knowing at all what to expect. So you must know exactly what you're looking for. And I have to admit, and I know this will disappoint a good friend of mine, but if somebody gave me a glass of wine and asked me what I'm tasting, I would have no idea what to say until I was told exactly what to look for. And then I would be able to say whether there is more or less of that particular ingredient. So now let's carry over these ideas to the space of geometric vectors, which we'll consider next. In the next video, we will represent each one of the white vectors as linear combinations of A and B, so that's decomposition. So we'll start with the vector C, and what we'll have to do is determine the proportions in which to add the vectors A and B in order to yield C. So the main point that I would like to say is to make is that if I didn't give you the vectors A and B, the question would be completely nonsensical. If you don't know with respect to what you're supposed to perform the decomposition, you're dead in the water. 
Now as it stands, the problem of decomposition is determining the co coefficients of the linear combination. So schematically, it can be written like this. We're given the vector c, and we have to determine the unknown coefficients of the linear combination of a and b. That will yield c. So this is the precise sense in which decomposition is opposite of evaluating linear combinations. When we evaluate linear combinations, we're given the vectors and the coefficients of the linear combination, and all we have to do is evaluate it. When performing decomposition, we're given the result of the linear combination and actually the vectors themselves of the linear combination. And our task is to determine the coefficients. That's what linear decomposition is, and that's the precise sense in which it's opposite of evaluating linear combinations.